98 FM. Dublin Talks. Call 67979981. And good morning from Adrian Kennedy. How are you this morning? I hope everything is good with you and I hope you can stay with us between now and midday today. Now, first off on the programme, I hope you had a good weekend. We're going to be talking in a while about uh, the Level 3 restrictions and whether or not it made any difference to your life over the weekend. Did you see any guarded checkpoints? I saw one. In the most bizarre of places. In the Phoenix Park. And I rolled down the window and the guard said, where are you going to? And I said, I'm taking my dogs for a walk. Grand, enjoy. (laughs) It just seemed like the most bizarre place to have uh, a checkpoint. Anyway, that's my uh, experience. But it was an interesting weekend nonetheless. By now, many of you will have seen the uh, video circulating on social media over the weekend of a rave that took place in the inner city. Um, The party... At the Oliver Bond Flats on Saturday night, Gardaí had to be called to break it up. Gardaí said there was no breach of um, social distancing restrictions, maybe when they got there. But the video circulating on uh, social media shows a group of people just not giving a damn. And uh, it's a short enough video, but there there they are. They're, they're, They're just, they're having the crack. Under level three restrictions, which are in place in Dublin right now, no outdoor gatherings of more than 15 people are permitted. Here's what the Gardaí had to say. Gardaí attended the scene and requested all persons to disperse. Gardaí maintained a presence in the area. No breaches of regulations were detected. And I want to find out how you feel about uh, after seeing the video of of a a large group, and it was a very large group, having... uh, Having a party with the DJ, um, lights, the whole lot in Oliver Bond Flats over the weekend. Uh, do you see events like this as a, a kick in the teeth to people who are taking this whole thing seriously? Also, what can be done to prevent these events happening again? What should Gardaí do if another one takes place this weekend? I'd love to hear from you on 67979081. You can text, you can WhatsApp, or you can send a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 989898. 0877 Now, one man who has been particularly outspoken about this is a Dublin City Councillor who actually represents the area in question here where the Oliver Bond Flats are. Uh, Councillor Manix Sling, good morning and welcome to 98FM. You've described this... A get together as an orgy of contempt. Strong words, aren't they? Well, I mean, we couldn't describe it any other way. You know, what I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, we are in the middle of one of the worst, you know, what I mean, health crises this country's ever faced, and also on a global level. We have twenty four seven information to social distancing. You know, we have a lockdown more or less in around Dublin. You know, we are appealing to everybody to safe distance. We have nightclubs closed, bars closed, etc. We have been appealing to our young population, please, please don't get uh, this uh, uh, condition and please stay away from each other and please adhere to the general rules. And here you had uh, in a, 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 a public housing uh, a flat complex without any consent of the local people, without any consent of the community down there and the many residents. An absolute invasion uh, by a bunch of selfish individuals who decided that they were going to have a drug, a drink uh, and a dance orgy in the middle of the flats. It was simply absolutely appalling. But I'll say, Adrian, this isn't the first time this has kind of happened. I mean, this happened on a regular basis in a round globe was called where 10 and 20, up to 30 uh, young adults were thrown up with a ghetto blaster and stand on the stairwells and just simply intimidate everybody. And it takes a huge amount of effort from Mangarda Shiakana to actually remove them. But they're back again in many, in many cases, like, you know, just simply intimidating people. But you, you couldn't make up what happened. Uh, in Judah Night in Oliver Bond Flats. And that's a really good community of people who are pressed to their collar. And they run, they run me from the very outset to tell me that these gazebos were going up, that there were speakers going up. Apparently the Gardaí arrived but didn't do anything about it. And they were calling uh, for assistance for hours. And it was late into the night by the time uh, the Gardaí arrived and, and dispersed the situation. By that stage of the game... 
children were upset, adults were upset, elderly were upset, you know, and it was just appalling and it was all over social media and huge damage was done to this community. And in terms of, of local people who weren't at uh, this party, this rave, call it whatever you will, um, they're obviously very concerned and very annoyed. Absolutely, they're completely annoyed and they feel extremely abandoned and betrayed by Dublin City Council. This is a housing estate. Dublin City Council have estate management. Dublin City Council have a billion of your money. You know what I mean? They have a whole myriad of legislations and laws and staff, and yet they didn't turn up. As a matter of fact, they still haven't turned up and they still haven't made a statement in relation to this estate. I've been calling on the Lord Mayor to go and visit the residents down here to assure them of their, you know, of their safety and assure them of our commitment to their well-being. But that hasn't happened. I mean, if this is a private property, if this is a private bunch of apartments, Jesus, there'd be, there'd be hell to pay. If this was like the Berlin Bar, there'd be, there'd be absolute slaughter. I mean, there'd be huge problems. But because it's a Dublin City Council housing estate, because it's a state themselves and they're ultimately responsible here, there doesn't seem to be kind of a much of a kind of a hullabaloo about it, except what we're doing here today and except what happened on social media. But this is an ongoing issue down here. Remember, the residents had to clean up afterwards and they informed me they found heroin they found cocaine, they found vials of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, all sorts of uh, drug paraphernalia, drink, you name it. I mean, the videos are there to see, you know what I mean, of the kind of, you know, stuff that they had to deal with the following morning. And, and there's no guarantee that these uh, individuals won't come back. These were organised uh, these were determined to, uh, you know, have their selfish way. And, and you know, we, we're all meant to just stand back and let it happen. It's simply outrageous. OK, now, as we know, Dublin is in uh, phase three, um, new restrictions, which has affected bars, restaurants, um, you name it. And people are being asked to abide by the guidelines, keep their distance, not meet up in groups of more than six people. Uh, looking at that, you, I mean, you, you already said uh, there have been many incidents like this. How do you stop it uh, in terms of the, the public message um, and the Gardaí? Well, I mean, in terms of Dublin City Council housing estates, you simply, like, you know, have the resources that the minute this shows its ugly head, you go in there and you kind of say, no, this is not going to happen, so you're determined to do it. I mean, that's what you do. You move it on, uh, and, and, you, and, you, and, you, and you, you challenge it wherever it's going, and you get that message across. I mean, I want to know where all the kind of organisations are that supposedly interface with the young folk. Where's the messaging coming out for these individuals? But again, you know what I mean, the point of the matter is that this has happened. Dublin City Council were aware it was happening on their estates for quite some time because I, I brought it to the attention of the head of housing in Dublin City Council. I mean, I'm constantly at them there. I raised the issue in relation to it regards antisocial behaviour and this kind of intimidation at last week's Dublin City Council meeting. But Dublin City Council officials have admitted to me that they basically, like, you know, have lost the battle in relation to uh, estate management and antisocial behaviour. And and let's let's call a spade a spade here. Okay, there is the pandemic and it's really, really, really serious here. But the core end of this is is a total disregard, a total contempt and massive antisocial behaviour on a Dublin City Council, a state-owned local authority housing estate, and nobody turned up from the council to say to these people, you cannot have this. There's a big sign up in the flat saying you can't play ball, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, and if you open your mouth, you get evicted. Yeah, 100 individuals to, to, to 200 individuals, drug dealers, you name it, turned up into these blocks of flats and created mayhem and intimidated everybody. Okay, okay so know, they, people, I'm, I'm looking at figures uh, that were released over the weekend and they show that uh, Dublin's southwest inner city and southeast inner city have some of the highest cases of COVID-19 in uh, the state. How do you communicate that message that, lads, this is serious, this virus is rampant in our community? How do you get that across to young people? Well, again, you have to kind of like, you know, put this out and put it out and put it out. And in, situa- in, in situations like where you have illegal gatherings and illegal parties and drug taking, you then have to enforce the law. The law is on the side of the law. The law in relation to this gathering was that it was unlawful. There was no permission given from Dublin City Council. It breached all of the guidelines in terms of tenancies, et cetera, et cetera, and estate management. All Dublin City Council had to do was to get on Gardaí corner in there early and disperse it. In the same way as we break up the you know, bomb for our material that we've been very successful at in terms of the housing estates over the years. And here's a situation whereby, to all intents and purposes, this was an illegal gathering, more or less, in a block of flats. 
you know, that had no consent whatsoever. And as I say, the city council are the ones, in my opinion, uh, that actually failed in their duty here. In order to get the message across uh, to the young folk, the problem for us is, is that social media now is alive with the video footage here. And the, po- the problem is, is that you might get a whole triggering aspect where lots of young people uh, may decide that this is worth a punt and that he can get away with this because this is all looking really groovy and looking really well. And we've got to get across the message that people are going to get sick as a result of this. People are going to get put into hospital as a result of this. And please God, nobody dies as a result of this because, you know, we don't know how many of those uh, young folk that were there, if they did or didn't, or they were carrying uh, the, uh, the, uh, the disease. Uh, but again, people have to walk in and out of those flats today. Children have to go to school today. Who knows what they're going to be touching off mm. or what happened. We do know that it's on the increase in terms of the young population. They're now contracting it, uh, you know, in, in, in large numbers. And there's a huge concern. But somewhere along the line, I have to say this. With all the information that's going out there, if you don't have enforcement on your housing estates where the law is on your side, well, then you're in real, real trouble. But I'd have to say this also. For young people to behave like this in this fashion under the, under, under the present guise of the, of, the, of the health crisis, there's some major problem here then between us and our young population. And we simply can't allow that betrayal to continue. We have a duty occurred to our young people and they have a responsibility to us. And somewhere along that line, there's a major, major failure and it needs to be addressed. All right. Independent Councillor uh, from Dublin City Council, Manic Stenn, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you very much indeed. And I would like to hear from you on 6797 981. You can text, you can WhatsApp, or you can send a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 98 98 98. Huge reactions to this already. And the question that I want to ask you is, how do you get the message across to... Uh, this was a, a young crowd in Oliver Bond Flats on Saturday. Uh, how do you get the message across, lads? Please, please, please. Um, I found myself over the weekend, it's not normally my nature, but I found myself over the weekend actually very angry. I was really angry over this uh, phase three uh, thing that D- Dublin has been put into. Angry because I and most of us have done what we've been asked to do over the last couple of months. And I'm angry that we're actually, after taking two steps backwards here in Dublin, because some people just don't give a damn. And people who have been playing by the rules are the ones that are suffering. 50,000 people out of work on Saturday morning because... So many people in Dublin just don't give a damn and have contributed to spreading this virus. Uh, This is from Paul. How are you, Adrian? Uh, Paul here. Um, I'm just uh, ringing in or voicing in. Say that party started at 8 o'clock and the video you're looking at is at half 12 at night. No guard had turned up. I'm sorry, I tell a lie. They did turn up and drove off. And how can they say there's no bridges being broken? There's nearly 150 people there. That's only a bit of what you see. You should see the video behind the people just coming in in their droves, taking drugs, drink, and you can name them. So look at the video, look at the after effects. Look at all the gas cylinders on the ground. Absolute disgrace. All right, Paul, thank you. I'd like to hear from you. And if you're from the area um, around Oliver Bond Flats, I'd like to hear from you as well on 67979981. But again, my question is, how do you communicate the message to that crowd who just don't seem to give a damn? There's a campaign, I can't remember where I saw the campaign, but it was aimed at young people uh, about COVID-19 and it was, the campaign was, don't kill your granny. Because that's what could happen. That's the reality of this thing. Anyway, uh, let's take some of your calls. Uh, Ellie, you're on 98FM. Hi, Ellie. Hi, yeah. Uh, you were very angry over this video. Yeah, it's fierce, um, in a way, frustrating because so many of us are, I know it sounds a bit weird to say it, but playing by the rules. Mm. And then you get someone like that, or so many people like that, and oh, it's just frustrating that you can't get through to them. You can't say to them, don't kill your granny. They don't care, unless the, the granny dies. They don't and, then they may, uh, and then they may care, but yeah. Yeah, um, they may care after that, and then they'll say to their friend, maybe we shouldn't do this. 
but there's nobody doing that at the moment. No, I agree with you. you. Um, It it is a very difficult message to get across. I mean, even during the the height of our lockdown, there were people having parties like this. So um, this is not anything new. So what's the solution here? Somebody just texted in a moment ago that the solution to this is for us to have a a curfew for under 21s after 8 o'clock. Is that a bit over the top? I think it is, to be honest. Um, it's like I know plenty of people who are in their teens that are paying attention to what's going on. Mm. And I like you want to go for a walk, you can't do it all of a sudden. Do you know, it's just basic things like that. Now, the pubs aren't really, so many of them aren't open that it doesn't make a huge difference. But at the same time, you can't tar everyone with the same brush. I mean, I'd consider myself a young person, but... I know I know. I, you say you can't tar everyone with the same brush, but unfortunately, here in Dublin right now, we are all being tarred with the same yeah. brush. We're all being yeah. uh, restricted. We're not allowed to leave the county. All of those restrictions in place now. So that is but tarring us all with, group, one, with the one brush. But then you still had a big group, what, 150 people that were at a house party. Or but a, if there, if there had been some sort of illegal curfew yeah. in place, then the Gardaí would have been able to go if the guards had just showed up and told them, no, everyone's in breach. Yeah, well, the guards, you know, the guards did show up, and in their statement, yeah. which I find a little bit bizarre, uh, they said, uh, Gardaí attended the scene and requested all persons to disperse. Uh, Gardaí maintained a presence in the area. No breaches of regulations were detected. Now, maybe this, is at, maybe this is at 6 o'clock in the morning when they were all off at home in bed. I don't know, but... Um, all right, stay there for a second if you can, please, Ellie. I'd like to hear from you on six seven nine seven ninety eight one. You can text, you can WhatsApp, or send a WhatsApp voice note to zero eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Um, I'm also not surprised, by the way, uh, that we haven't heard from locals. One of our reporters is actually uh, heading down to Oliver Bond Flats and uh, is interviewing a couple of locals on um, the, the condition that they have anonymity that they're not identified. Kian sent me this WhatsApp voice note. Morning, Jeremy. Um, yeah, I, I think this is just absolutely ridiculous. I think it's a complete disgrace. The, 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 the young people who went need to really think about what they're doing. They're not thinking about the bigger picture and the, uh, you know, the frontline workers who have to put in extended hours, you know, working around the clock, putting themselves at extreme risk, um, treating these very ill patients uh, when they come in. Um, and if the disease spreads much more, we're going to have an overwhelmed health service. Um, I work for the ambulance service myself. Um, and um, I don't want to put myself at any more risk than needs to be. Um, and, and we are all working very, very hard on the front line. Just because it's not seen doesn't mean it's not happening. Um, so people who, who go to these raves really need to check themselves. It's irresponsible and it's selfish. Cheers. All right. Thank you very much, D. Kean. We'll take a quick break. We'll take more of your reaction when, um, when the show continues. The sound of the city from Balbriggan to Blanchardstown. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. And we are here until midday today. Huge reaction to what we're talking about. And that is that video that circulated over the weekend of a rave in Oliver Bond Flats um, on Saturday evening. Um, There's no need to keep sending the video to us, by the way. I got it on Saturday night. I got the one, uh, the video of the aftermath as well on Sundays. We have seen all of the uh, videos but the uh, reaction to uh, this crowd gathering over the weekend has been um, unbelievable a lot of people extremely uh, angry that uh, this crowd in Oliver Bond Flats on uh, Saturday night decided to give the two fingers to the whole of Dublin and have a rave as uh, the city enters into phase three of uh, restrictions which means you and I and everybody else can't go on a stage vacation, for example. Um, Have a a listen to this message that's just come in. We uh, got a message from somebody who lives in the flats and said, uh, no, I'm really sorry, I can't talk on air. A lot of my friends and family listen to your show and I I will be in a lot of danger if they hear my voice, says uh, that message. As I said, one of our reporters is uh, down in Oliver Bond Flats interviewing a couple of people on condition of anonymity. Why aren't people speaking out? Your silence is actually quite uh, deafening, to be honest. Um, let me have a listen to this WhatsApp voice note from uh, Dermot. Morning, Adrian. It's becoming very, very clear that we'll 
the um, government go on about social distancing and doing the right thing and stuff like that. Uh, that's the public face. It's becoming very clear to me anyway that they're actually practicing the policy of herd immunity. And the reason why I say that is because we heard the statements from Gerda Shea Connell this morning. He said that there was no violation of COVID-19 regulations. But you can clearly see that there was. And you can also see with the lack of uh, prosecutions and fines that are being handed out. You know, we're t- the government are saying, don't do it. We're telling you not to do it. But you go ahead and do it anyway. I think they're heading towards herd immunity because you know that they're fighting a losing battle when it comes to this COVID-19. I wish they'd just be more honest about it. The incidents over the weekends and parks across Dublin, the same thing. All right, Dermot, thanks very much indeed. Uh, the new breed of feral kids, says this message, have no regard for anyone else. Bred from evil drug dealers, the problem is the law, says uh, Marcus in Cabra. Let me go to Trish, you're on 98FM. Trish, how are you? How are you, Adrian? How are you? Uh, also very angry <coughs> in, uh, by the scenes we saw in that video. Oh, absolutely livid. You'll have to excuse me if I can't even string a decent sentence now together, Adrian. I'm absolutely hopping. Um, it's not just happening in Dublin. It's happening all over Ireland. Mm. I'm living in Washford. We're originally dubs. And um, we see it every weekend here, especially now in the last few weeks with the good weather. Tremor is hopping and everything else. But the problem I have, I have a father who suffers from severe COPD and is isolated at the best of times. My mother has a heart condition and she's his full-time carer. And they're practically isolated 24 hours a day, seven days a week since March. Mm. They haven't seen their grandchildren. They can't walk outside that front door. My mother gets shot and delivered. She's disinfecting everything that comes in the door and everything. They have no quality of life whatsoever. Now, um, and that is obviously because of the fear of coming into contact with this virus and the severe medical impact that would have on them. Exactly, yep. exactly. Now, people, you know what I mean, there's an awful lot of people out there that are doing the right thing and have a conscience and everything else. But you get the likes of these people that they don't give a shit, Adrian. They really don't because it's not happening to them. They think they're untouchable. I've seen it myself out in Tremor. Tremor was packed over the weekends, as I said to you. Shops, everything. Not one person wearing a mask. It was like as if the virus was non-existent. Same in the hotels and everything else. And, the, only... and the reality of all that is Waterford is one of the counties in Ireland that is um, develop- increasing cases of this virus and yes. could be faced with level three by this weekend, the way we're, things are going. We're in the danger zone. Yes. Donegal, yeah. Loud and Waterford are the next ones to, to go to level three. Yeah. Now... As I said, the problem I have is, like, if my mother goes to a shop and even touches the surface, can contact that and bring it home to my father. That's how serious this is, like. Mm. You know, the people out there, they do not have any feeling for the elderly that are cooped up in houses, that can't go outside the door, to have these underlying conditions. And as I said, they have no quality of life, and they are never going to get any quality of life if this kind of thing is, is, is still happening. Well, if, if we don't get rid of this <clears throat> virus, and the only way to get rid of this virus is us all to suppress it by behaving ourselves, basically. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Exactly and it's very frustrating, I have to say, for for people in in that situation. It's also very frustrating for, like I said, 50,000 workers in Dublin out of work on Saturday because... Well, that's it. There's no yeah. consideration there either, Adrian. No, but the companies no. are closing down every week. People are losing the jobs. They don't realise all this has a knock-on effect. You know what I mean? Families are going to be left without money and everything else. You know what I mean? But what people don't see is the other side of it. It's the psychological effect of this of people being cooped up in their homes, not being able to see their family, not being able to see their grandchildren for fear of catching this thing. And, like, I mean, my mother is on the verge of a nervous breakdown now at this stage. And I'm getting really, really upset talking about it. And, like, I mean, people, all these people with their conspiracy theories and everything else, it's not only the public that are at fault, the government that are at fault as well. They're making mistakes. But the least that we could do is wash our hands and, you know what I mean, do the right thing. Please do the right thing for the sake of my father and my mother and for people like them around the country. There's thousands like them. Thousands like them. These are the people that built up this country. And have a little bit of bloody respect at the end of the day. Just give them that bit. You know what you mean? No, have no, a no, bit no, of decency. No, like I said, the, I mean, the reality of this is that that crowd that gathered on Saturday and had their uh, canisters of laughing gas or whatever the hell it is and uh, were having a rave, they... 
probably don't really care about you or your parents they don't. or anybody really. No, they don't. They don't care. So either. how do you communicate the message? How do you stop it happening? I tell you, hit them where it hurts. Find them, but don't find them a hundred euro or two hundred euro. Hit them with about two grand, three grand. Yeah, sure they're not going to pay it. Yeah, but look, you know what I mean, at the, at the end of the day, I don't know what the answer is, Adrian. I really don't know. I just hope people do the right thing. All right, uh, stay there for one second, Trish, because Eamon says the answer to this is uh, the Gardaí need to get more heavy-handed. Hi, Adrian, it's Eamon here. Yeah, I, I think as long as we continue policing by consent, we're never going to stop this. I mean, we need to get real here. We, we, we need the police force like they have in Spain or, or France or Italy. He'll just go in and break it up and no messing. Cheers, thanks. And this is from Aoife. Morning, guys. Where are half of the parents? Absolutely disgraceful. Carry on what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> the parents probably don't give a damn either, had the truth be told. Olivia, you're on 98 FM. Hi, Olivia. Hi, Adrian. Um, I'm just, um, just people should have more consideration for other people and follow the rules and have a big hop on. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and most of us are following the rules and do have a bit of cop on. But sadly, there's a very large minority of people who don't give a damn, don't care. And I, I, I'm just wondering, and this is something I said earlier on, I found myself over the weekend um, being angry uh, over uh, the restrictions put in place. Not angry that they've been put in place, but angry that they've had to be put in place because so many people are just giving us all the two fingers. And... It is quite annoying, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's just people just don't listen and they just think they can do what they like. But if it hits their family, then they will be sorry. Yeah, no, they will. And like I said, Don't Kill Your Granny is a campaign. I think it was in Australia or somewhere. I'm not quite sure where it was. But that was the the appeal to younger people to cop on. uh, by telling You know, most of them probably have a granny. And, you know, maybe that'll get to them. But... I don't think it will, to be quite honest with you. No, I don't think so. I just think they're just going in one ear and out the other. Absolutely, yeah. And if yeah. it hits them bad, they'll then maybe cop on, cop on, but it's terrible that I'll have to get that far for some people. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yep, I agree. Um, here's a message that's just come in to us. I'm currently outside the hospital, waiting in my car, while my partner goes in to potentially have our first baby. I've not been allowed in uh, to any scans, yet I uh, could have attended that rave. At this stage, I think all the pubs should come together and open and run their business safely. Too many people are suffering from the restrictions while lowlifes go and throw parties and raves, says uh, John. And he's not the only one that's been hit in that way, um, not being able to go into the hospital for a scan with his partner, his wife. It's very frustrating for both of them. Sarah sent me this message. Hi, guys. Um, just wanted to come on and say that, yeah, this is exactly what we said would happen. Um, the majority of us um, are sticking by the rules. The publicans and the restaurant owners are suffering. Um, but as always, it's a small yet significant amount of people that are ignoring the rules and making the rest of us suffer. Um, let's hear actually from uh, Susanna, a Dublin publican, uh, with her reaction to that video from Oliver Bonflats. By the way, this is just the latest one, the latest video to circulate. Uh, this isn't unique to this particular flats complex. Anyway, let's have a listen to what Suzanne has to Hi, say. Hi, this is Suzanne. I'm a publican in Dublin. Uh, our pub is a gastro pub. We've been serving food, uh, doing everything safely. People sanitise when they come in, the usual contact tracing. For us to be closed and to see a video like this, for our 40 staff to be out of work and to see this going on in town and other places is, it's frustration isn't the word. We can open if we use our beer garden. We're allowed 15 people in the beer garden. I know if I have 16 people in the beer garden, our local guard station who are trying their best, they will be in and they will shut me down if I have 16 people. We don't get a break at all. If uh, if we have any more than 15, we will be shut down. The guards are in and out to us all the time, annoying us really. They're doing their job, but they have to trust us. So I can only have 15, but this can go on in town. We were in Dunleary yesterday with the family. We went to the market. It was the exact same there. There must have been 800 people squashed into that market in Dunleary. There is 150 squashed there and the guards don't do anything. So 
I'm not allowed to open my business. My 40 staff now have to sign on because I'm abiding by the rules. But all this can go on. It's a disgrace. Susanna, I feel your pain and I feel your frustration. Friends of mine have had to close their businesses over the weekend. Um, They were running, like yourself, Suzanne, uh, a gastropub, have been doing everything by the letter of the law. And I mean, so much so that I kind of didn't really enjoy the experience. It was that kind of clinical. But they were doing a really, really good job. And now all their staff back on uh, on the payment again. So I can see why you'd be so frustrated. Dermot, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Dermot? Good, Adrian. I had to, I had to um, ring you in that time. Um, I've I seen the video. Mm-hmm. And I'd li- I just want to take you, a, you know, take up one of the people that uh, called in there and said that, you know, the, the, the things that you're seeing involved were the product of, say, drug deal and scum. Um, that's not true because it's across the board. Socially, it's across the board. Um, oh, could, in, in terms of young people getting together? Yeah, I could I could put uh, we could send you in videos now, except they can't uh, for that protection reasons and the job that I'm involved in mm-hmm. of the groups that I had to deal with on Saturday and Sunday in that fifties and sixties. They were far from socially deprived. They were from all races, all nationalities, all over say fourteen, fifteen years of age. No masks, no social distance. And when I told them that the guards could see them on CCTV, they gave the big smiley waves to them. They don't care. It's across the board, you just don't care. And when it comes to enforcement, uh, I honestly think that the enforcement issue is more down to paperwork on, on part of the guards. If, if taking 60 kids' as names and addresses and trying to issue fines is an awful lot harder than you as a business owner and just pulling you up on it. You don't want the hassle. You genuinely don't want the hassle. But I, I was gobsmacked by the statement that the guards issued right. earlier on. Uh, they re- requested all persons to disperse. Guardi maintained a presence in the area. No breaches of regulations were detected. Now, and I'll tell you why, because, um, Adrian, it's, it's, it's not in law. It's not law. The regulations, the health regulations under the, the, the Public Health Act, it's, a, it's an amendment to the actual Public Health Act. And I'm scared in, in the sense that that's going to run out on the 9th of November. That has to go before both houses on the 9th of November to be passed again for any other amendments to be made to it. You know, so I'd be worried about the likes of that. Like, they're not doing the job now as it is. They have zero interest in doing the job as it is, except for the high-profile uh, opportunities for the cameras and you see them out there on RTE and the, 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 at the checkpoints and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we rang them on... Saturday evening at 20 past 7 because I thought there was trouble brewing in a specific area. He said he monitored the situation on CCTV. I seen the camera move and he said, fine. At 5 past 8 when we closed this particular area, all hell broke loose and one lad was danced into the ground. No guards. Right. Do you think, uh, because this is where I want to bring the conversation for a while, do you think that this level 3 restrictions thing is working? Having any effect? <laughs> Adrian, say honest to God, level three. Yeah, it could go to level thirty-three. There's no, there's no getting through to these young lads and young girls out here. And do you know what? I've, I said it earlier on in a, on a WhatsApp there that I personally think, right? Well, you're seeing the public face of um, government saying we have to do this. We're all in this together. Secretly, I think they're actually encouraging herd immunity because they know that the minority of people that are vulnerable to this. They can't even sustain them. We, our hospital system can't can't um, deal with a wind of vomit and bug. And to be honest with you, and I'm, I know he'd never say it, but I think they'd be sooner, better, and an awful lot more happier if these old people just shuffled off the face of the earth. Okay, do, because, do, me fa- do, do me a favour, Dermot, stay there for one second, because after the break, um, I am going to be talking to a resident from Oliver Bond Flats um, who whose voice I've been asked to disguise... Uh, using our voice disguise. Kelly, why am I disguising your voice? Safety reasons, Adrian. Safety? Yeah. Okay. I want to find out a little bit more straight after the break. Don't go away. The sound of the city. From Coolock to Cabin Teeley. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. We're talking about the level three restrictions and how some people just don't play ball at all and give the two fingers to the rest of us by having a big rave in a flats complex in the south inner city on uh, Saturday evening uh, described by uh, one local councillor as an orgy of contempt 
That's what uh, Councillor Manic Flynn said. Now, uh, Kelly, for your safety, is how you yeah. described it, we have changed your name and we're putting your voice through our voice disguise. Uh, wh- what are you worried about? Intimidation, Adrian. As you stated before, previously did, I picked up all my parties are coming down and other tenants, all of our bonds want to remain anonymous, so it's for their reasons I want to. Are you afraid of the people who gathered there on Saturday? Uh, yes. Oh, right, okay, that's a simple answer to a simple question. Okay, so now I understand. Now, where would you... you be, Adrian? Me, yeah, I probably would be, yeah. I probably would be, to be honest. Mm. Um, so tell me about what happened. On Were you there? No. Well, I was here, I was listening to I had to hear it throughout the night, but um, when you court request on Garda Shia, I'm calling to help. And the Wing Government City Council, we get told, oh, we're sorting the problem, but it's still ongoing, and Garda Shia can't come in and write tell us that no breaches were in, mm. in, um, in the evidence, yeah. You can see that there was 150 plus all drug fields, mad maniacs around there in the pitch. And were, were many of them from the flats, or were they from all over? I wouldn't be able to tell you, Adrian. Uh, okay, you say you, you've we've disguised your voice for your uh, safety. Let me read a message that's just come in from somebody who doesn't even have uh, the bravery to come on like yourself, even though yeah. we've offered a voice disguise. But let me read this message. Have a listen to this, and I want to get your reaction to this. My in-laws live in Oliver Bond Flats. The people there live on the basis of saying nothing to the authorities or you're branded a snitch and your life is made miserable. Good, honest residents live in fear there, but they stay there close to other family members and sort their own problems out together. They would never ring the guardie. It's simply not done. That football park was destroyed the other night with no regard for the kids who want to play there the next day. No regard for the other residents of that complex. It's a cesspit of criminal activity and nothing like it was uh, years ago when it was a good community. The Gardaí are afraid of the people who live in there, so that is why the locals are also afraid to speak out. Is that all true? It's 100%. That is 100%. That's exactly what I I would say to two, Adrian. That's exactly how it's run now. You get no help, so who else can be torn to if our own police won't even come into our community? We're left stranded to just come in and come out. And because we're a council, we're, we're shamed down because we're a council estate and it's been run by thugs and nothing being done about it every single day prior to the COVID. And there's been plenty more parties than there has been on that pitch. Uh, uh, yes, in, uh, since the start of all of this, yeah. Yeah, uh, and plenty more in the complex um, before to, to the pitch too. It wasn't only that party and still no guard presence, still no, no nothing. So did you make a conscious decision to not be there on Saturday evening because you could see this was going to happen? I made a conscious decision as an adult to know that I wouldn't be around around all that craziness that I see on a daily basis that come into these flats. Mm. So no way, not a hope. I wouldn't be putting my life at risk to walk around and get stabbed or something. No. So when you're living your day-to-day life in those flats, you just keep your head down and mind your own business, do you? Yeah. And just try to get on with things. To That's very, very frustrating, I'm sure. And uh, and obviously, nobody likes the area in which they live to be uh, to be run down on on radio and the way Especially in which it is. Especially having no help as well, and then being criticised as an area to be as a run down area. But then, on the other hand, still having no help and still seeing the same people and the same things going on day in day out. All right, and still nothing being done about it. So. I just don't want the slander to keep going on about the area when people are just in fear. Yeah, and, uh, and, and you as an example are an individual who um, decided to not be at home on Saturday because you knew this was going to be going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the first time it's happened, but you feel literally defenceless. Yes, exactly. All right, stay there for a second, uh, Kelly, and I really appreciate you uh, talking to us. Um, 
The point I wanted to get across was how angry I am over this. Yesterday, I saw my partner of four years for the first time since the first week of June. Uh, before that, it was March. We get to sit in his car and drive around. Yesterday, we got to go for a walk because it wasn't too crowded. But he can't come into my house because I live with my dad. Not only is he vulnerable, but he is terrified of catching it. And I can't uh, be the one who gives it to him. So, for the next two weeks, I will be avoiding him until uh, we are sure I haven't caught it. And it's nothing against my partner. He is just pure and simple terrified. If we want to spend a night together, I have to book into a and b for two weeks. And I'm okay with doing things as long as he is safe, but it's a kick in the teeth seeing people flouting the rules in this way. Peter, you think people are making too big a deal over this? Yeah, I do, absolutely. Um, I just feel people have had enough, really, of these over-the-top rules from the government. Uh, this has been going on six months, probably more, at this stage. Mm-hmm. And nothing's really going to change until there's a vaccine, really which I can't see happening within the next 12 months. So at some stage, you know, people need to start living their lives again. Now, of course, listen, they know the, they know the risks. Adults there, we know the risks. There's risks to everything, like driving to work, there's risks. But I would personally blame the government on, not all parties, but a lot of parties like this, um, because they're getting, especially young people, which obviously most people there were, uh, not giving them any other option, nowhere else to socialise. You know, wet pubs have been closed since day one, really, of this lockdown. And again... But even uh, to, to suggest, uh, Peter, that if all the wet pubs and all of the restaurants and everything else in Dublin were open, that this wouldn't have happened on Saturday is absolute rubbish, because... It's not at all. I would suggest that a lot. it's a lot less likely to happen, absolutely. Because I know a lot of people from that area. Yeah, but, uh, but, uh, but, on Saturday but, uh, but like, as you know, Peter, even when the pubs are open... Uh, they've, you know, six at a table and all that. So you couldn't have a get-together like that in a pub, is the point. Not everyone there knows each other. There's groups. There's not all one... That wasn't all one group. There's lots of different groups No, I know that. I know that, And of course, of course, opening the wet pubs would 100% of reduce the likelihood of that happening. You know, like, as I said, Ireland, not only is it closed six months, it's been like this, really. We're we're one of the strictest countries about it. You look at other countries like Italy... Um, who were the, one of the worst hit in the world, uh, their lockdown lasted two months, two months, just over two months. Mm. And then they started opening everywhere back up. Now, I looked at their death toll um, for 15 to September. There was 60 million people, they've had 15 deaths. Now, they, everywhere is open back. You can fly in there, everywhere is open. So why aren't we looking at countries like that who have had it way worse than we had and actually found a solution to it instead of just ruining uh, the whole country? Uh, and okay, it down? but I'll, I'll argue with you that a country like France, for example, uh, with their lockdown, they dealt with the virus; it uh, nearly went away, and now they have more cases than they had during the lockdown. Yeah, but the thing is, the, the, the wet pubs and restaurants are getting blamed on this. There's no actual evidence of any sprouts happening in places like that. The mm. government are just picking on them, and as I said, it's really affecting the young people uh, more so, because they obviously like to go out for a few points. And the thing is, the young people are the least affected by this, really. Like, you can probably count on two hands how many young people have died from this. Let me, uh, let me ask forever. you then, Peter. Uh, here in Dublin, we are now at level three restrictions, which means we yeah. can't leave the county. It means um, with all the pubs and restaurants, well, a lot of them are closed. Do you think this is going to work? Do you think it's pointless? Of course it's pointless, because what's going to happen is three weeks, OK, say the numbers drop slightly, three weeks, or I can't imagine them opening up after three weeks because they say that, and then they, oh, another two weeks, another three weeks. We'll say they open it up in a month's time, the numbers creep up slightly again. Oh, no, we're going to lock, lock them down again. You cannot just keep doing this. Or we, especially the young people again, because I think we're being unfairly treated, we're going to be paying for this, for the government locking the country down and now locking Dublin down again for the next 20, 30 years. You know, over, and like many people are in ICU at the moment, they're hospital. Again, you can... You for, for, probably for, have yeah, fortunately, at this moment, not not too many. Uh, yeah, exactly. But, but so the, the, the you fear cannot lock is... down a country because like, there's no one in ICU, there's no one really dying. You cannot lock down the capital city 
for something like that. It's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, stay there for a second, Peter. I'd like to hear from you uh, after the break because I want to focus on the level three restrictions that were brought in over the weekend. Are they working? Will they work? Have you seen checkpoints? Have you changed the way you're doing things? Or do you, like Peter, think it's a complete waste of time? Let me just play play a couple of WhatsApp voice notes on what we were talking about, about the the party on Saturday. I think it's not because they are selfish or irresponsible. I think it's just because they're young. And uh, we that complain are old. That's it. Yeah, you could argue that. David uh, says the Gardaí have a lot of questions to answer. Morning, Adrian. There is laws there in place to um, bring in fines. Like the, you got the Public Order Act. Um, there's a Class C fine and there's a Class D fine under certain public order acts and the class C is 500 euro and the class D is a thousand euro and then secondly with large groups like that anything above 12 people or more that is causing anti-social behavior falls under a riot act and um, we need to start questioning to why the guards aren't acting and then secondly who is going to make the guards act because it's getting quite serious now and it needs to be stopped thank you all right thank you david yvonne Adrian, the fire brigade needs to go in and blast them all over with the water hose. <laughs> yeah, okay, simple solution. Uh, here's another one, frustrated. Hi Adrian, I'd just like to say, like, I've seen a video and it's ridiculous. Like, this week I'm organising a Zoom party for my daughter for her birthday because she can't have her little friends over because we're in Dublin. And, like, I don't know, it's just... Some people are taking that on board and some people aren't. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. The phrase, we're all in this together, seems to be gone. And a final message on this from Cindy, who's angry. Hello, this is Cindy. I think the people at that rave, 90% of them don't walk, so why would they care about people losing their jobs on Saturday? This job seeks lounge, which they're not even seeking jobs, should be taken off them when they're caught doing all this. Thank you. OK, quick break, back in a sec. It's 11 o'clock across Dublin. Good morning. This is Adrian Kennedy. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. And this is Tom with Monday's Top Headlines. Thanks, Adrian. Good morning. Dublin City Council is asking people to report any activity that goes against public health advice to the Gardaí. It's after around 100 people gathered at a flat complex on Oliver Bond Street on Saturday night for an outdoor rave. Gardaí say they carried out a number of patrols of the area and found no breaches of regulations. Elsewhere, everyone is being asked to lower the number of social contacts you have by by half this week. Dublin accounted for more than half of the 396 cases that were reported nationally yesterday. And Gardaí say over half of people arrested in connection with its Money Mule investigation are teenagers. 30 have so far been detained as part of Operation Ransom, which targets people letting their bank accounts be used by criminals to move stolen funds. Of those arrested, more than half were under 18 and the youngest was 15. Finally, for now, homeowners living in Dublin City will find out later on how much local property tax they'll be paying next year. Councillors will vote on the charge at a meeting this evening. You're up to date on 98. 98 FM Dublin Talks Call 67979981 And good morning from Adrian Kennedy um, I'd like to hear from you on 67979981 You can text, you can WhatsApp or you can send a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 98 98 98 The uh, level 3 restrictions that were placed on Dublin from midnight on Friday night early Saturday morning have come into force It means that uh, pubs and gastropubs and uh, restaurants that don't have outdoor areas have had to shut up shop. And we uh, dubs are meant to not leave our county. But will it work? Is it working? Has it changed your behaviour? Emer sent me uh, this message. She says, I work for a bar restaurant in Bray and while I'm delighted that our business is back open, I think you should highlight the amount of people who drove from Dublin into Bray at the weekend for food and drink. We were busier than ever. And the customers I spoke to were all from Dublin, Shankill, Dundrum, uh, even some from Swords. My friends who work in a pizza place in Bray said the exact same thing. Everyone was driving into Bray and not following the advice. We almost ran out of food. The point I'm making is trying to stop dubs from leaving the county is not working. You should highlight this. And that's from a lady uh, called Emer. And I want to find out whether or not you think these uh, level three restrictions 
which are meant to prevent us from leaving the county. Um, let, actually, let's just do a very quick uh, WhatsApp poll. Just out of curiosity. Okay, we're not going to pass your number on to the guards. <laughs> I want you to answer this question. Uh, since uh, Saturday, have you left County Dublin? Text yes or no to 0877 98 98 98. Have, did you leave County Dublin for a non-essential reason over this weekend? Text yes or no to 0877 989898. This will be an indication as to whether or not this thing is, is actually going to work or do the government have to bring in more draconian measures? Uh, as I said, with this level three restrictions, I saw uh, one checkpoint over the weekend. And that checkpoint was in the Phoenix Park. And rolled down the window. The guard said, where are you going? I said, I'm taking my dogs for a walk. And he said, enjoy it. And that was it. I just didn't see the point of the checkpoint in the middle of the Phoenix Park near uh, near the zoo. I just still can't get my head around what they were there for. Um, Suzanne, I played a voice note from you earlier on as a, a Dublin publican who has a lot of staff now back on the um, payment from this uh, weekend. This yep. level uh, three restrictions obviously directly impact somebody like you. Uh, do you think it's going to work? Well, I'm I'm here at the moment in our pub. We have the Eden House in Rathfarnham. Um, level three restrictions. So we're allowed to open our beer garden. We're allowed to serve 15 people. First of all, is it worth me opening to serve 15 people? Secondly, my guards will be in on me like... Uh, there's 17 people here and and come down on me and close me down that's what I was talking about earlier in my in my uh, voice message but what I'm kind of angry about just go back a little bit sorry to the the, the flats there we're, we're so angry at, at these 150 people in the flats and having their rave mm. and drinking and all that and drugs and whatever the markets in Dunleary yesterday were there was about 800 yummy mummies with their frappuccinos and having their vegan things. Nobody is saying a word about them. They were allowed about 800 to 1,000. We were squashed like sardines. We got out of there. It was the same in Marley Park in the markets. So 800 feet, 150 people in Oliver Bomb Flats are getting uh, crucified. I, I, I'm, I'm so angry with what went on there. But you're allowed to walk around the park with your frappuccino and mm. no alcohol, and that's allowed. And I, this is what's just either we shut down. I think there has to be a curfew eight o'clock. That's right. I, I, I was about to ask, and I want to actually get people's uh, opinions on that. Uh, this yeah. is what's being uh, introduced in other cities that don't yeah. want to go to a full lockdown, but they're introducing a, an eight or nine o'clock curfew. You yeah. think that if we're if we're going to t- take this seriously, we need to act seriously and deal yeah. with it? Yeah. Yeah. 8 o'clock curfew, everybody in their own houses with their own family, the guards can call up, knock on your door if, if it's not your people living there that's it, you're mm. I mean, forget the, the thing of alcohol, I mean we can say close the off licence, close that It's there was no alcohol yesterday in Dunleary in the market You know, it, y- it was, yet it was still packed it was packed there, it's Forget pubs, alcohol. I mean, we're obviously the ones being blamed for this, and I'm in my empty pub here looking at all my hand sanitizer and COVID stickers, and you know, and and like, stop putting the blame on different groups. On there was there was no young people raving around yesterday in Marley. It was families with money, and you know, it's just mind-boggling how we're we're putting things into different sections, and this is allowed, but that's not, and just everybody. It doesn't matter if you're young or old or a curfew. Just, you know, you go, and, uh, to, you go to work. I, I said earlier on, Suzanne, that I found myself over this weekend angry. Really, really yeah. angry that, uh, yeah, that we, uh, you know, when I look at friends of mine who are now back out of work again, I look at mm-hmm. people like you, uh, you've done everything that was asked of you and you're, uh, you've had to shut up shop. That makes me really, really angry mm-hmm. because of the amount of people who have decided to give us all the two fingers and just party on. Mm. But parties, uh, like, 
if I keep going back to the, the park, that wasn't a party, but that's allowed. And and and. Okay, well, then, well then I'll rephrase that. Uh, people yes. who have decided not to follow the guidelines. Not and uh, the guidelines. you said yes. yourself you decided to leave that park on uh, over the weekend because it was too yes. crowded. Um, yes. More people should be doing that. That's the point I'm yes. making. And there was no masks. There was no... And, and this was... These were... Uh, you know, this, is, this wasn't people going around with gas cylinders and there was no... You know... Yeah. No, what, no, I, 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 I get and you. What, yeah. I, what I'm annoyed about as well is the guards obviously were afraid to go into Oliver Bond's flats. They were afraid of, you know, oh, look, we go in there and there's going to be war and we're going to have to mm. make a wreck and all that. But they can come in here and bully me. They can come in here and say, oh, no, I'm an easy target. They yeah, because they, say, yeah oh, because they have some hold over you because yeah, of your license and all me. of that. What, yeah, what, yep. So do I have to start acting like them? Like the Oliver Bond flats? Maybe they, maybe that's a bloody right idea. I don't know. Like, I've done everything. And they will come in to me, oh, the 17 people now, I'm shutting you down. Mm. And that's why I'm so... But they won't go to the flats because that's, oh, that's a bit too much hassle now. We go down to the Eden House and we're and we tell them. And now you, you were in Marley, were you, um, yesterday? No, we were in Dunleary yesterday. Uh, at the cocoa market, was it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and in fact, yeah. I've just been sent a photograph of it uh, this very yeah. second. And I'm all for people trying to make money and the stalls. Yeah. And, but, like, I just don't understand any of us mm. at this point and pe- my customers are emailing me saying would you not open and would you not 15 in the beer garden what like what's the point how am I going to put you can 15 and then another two and you go and you know so I have to stay closed now and, and uh, it, like I said it is for reasons like that that I found myself over the weekend being really really angry and yeah. um, you know it's not directly affecting me and that I'm sitting here at my job today thank God but I know of so many people who've yeah. put so much effort like yourself over the last number of weeks yeah. only to have it pulled from under you yet again yeah. because people aren't aren't playing ball alright uh, Suzanne I wish you well and I hope this right. for you and for all of us in Dublin doesn't last more than three weeks and that you will be back open again I keep my fingers yeah, but close I just crossed. think we all have to make choices. It's not just the yes, Oliver absolutely. Yeah. It's, you I, know. I agree, 100%. Yep. Yeah, okay. Thanks for talking to me, Suzanne. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Carol, uh, you believe that this level three lockdown thing won't work either. Why? Well, I think because the pubs have been shut, there has been parties ongoing, and young people are getting fed up and bored. And, you know, they're not going, you know, they're just, they're, they're in all the time. 24-7 and the mm. mentality they need to get out you know they need to have some kind I know of the, but there's getting out um, and there's getting out in groups of you know on large groups there's a bit of a difference uh, Rachel you believe that sealing off Dublin will make no difference at all I don't believe it has I actually find it busier this weekend and even this morning driving over um, I've had to come somewhere and I must, even the traffic is much busier. I don't know what it is. I, I went out on Saturday for a couple of hours with the kids and it was just, everywhere was just packed. Mm. Packed and no social distance and no nothing yeah, like you, that. You could, say, you could say it was packed because people aren't leaving Dublin. Would but that be you know a... what, Adrian, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to have any effect, to be honest. I actually think, if I'm 100% honest, I think the only way... They, they're going to get a curb on this by going into full lockdown again. Oh, God and I forbid. Think that's, I know. And that, so here's the thing. No one wants that. Everyone's no. saying we, we want a park. Like, even that lady was saying about Marley Park. I am not exaggerating when I say Marley. I've said this all through the lockdown about that place. That even on the road, the amount of people does be... it just be horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Well, I, I was in the Phoenix Park yesterday for a walk yeah. with my dogs, and there was loads of people, um, granted, but... We were, like, I was walking the dogs. I wasn't coming into close contact with anybody. Do you know what I mean? Uh, well, here's something. I went down to Marley Park on Saturday. It was uh, We went in with the kids. We lasted 10 minutes. We walked in. And when I say gang, and this, and like what that girl was saying, it wasn't young teenagers. It wasn't, this was all older people. There was, <laughs> and there was loads of them. And they were all together and they were all, I don't know if they were families or whatever they were, but there was loads. And I can tell you now, there wasn't a guard in sight. wasn't a guard in sight. Well, uh, and bizar- this is bizarrely, one of the- bizarrely, in the Phoenix Park yesterday, there was a guard at checkpoint. And I, <laughs> I, for the life of me, I can't understand what it was there for. I really can't. Yeah. And I'd love the guards to even explain what the rationale I just was. Find, I just find they're doing it so backwards. They're, they're, they're saying one thing, they're doing another. I, I just feel it's so contradictory, the whole lot. And then it makes no sense. I think if they, if they want to do these different levels and they want to have this plan in place, 
be very, very clear about it, be very, very strict about it, and, and have things that can be done to, to counteract like that without parties and stuff. Have a guard unit that they can set up that they can, okay, listen, this is going on. Get in here, clear it, get it out. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And doing that, and hitting people where it hurts, like, for the I know, but they, they, like they, that. You know, some people uh, have been texting in saying the only way to deal with this again is to have another full lockdown. I really uh, dread that thought. I don't think anyone wants that, but no. I do genuinely believe... But, but, people, but, but here's the thing, here's the thing, Rachel, like, it, it, it seems pointless to even think about yeah. that because we did have a full lockdown. It did work, it did uh, almost get rid of the virus, and now here we are back at square one again. I'll be honest, and I said it, I, I genuinely think they came over too soon. Instead of, I think the original plan where they had wanted to do it really, really slowly was what should have been done. And I think the pressure of people getting really annoyed, kind of saying, oh, look, come on, you know, we're okay, come over. I think we came over way too quick. And, I, and I'm going to be honest, I think people saying, <clears throat> sorry, pardon me, I think people blaming like, oh, there's no pubs for them to go where to, there's no places for kids to go to, there's no this, there's no that. Mm. It's no excuse for the behaviour of what people are doing. Because at the end of the day, like someone said earlier, it's not like, I could, I don't want to, I'm not like high risk, I'm not any of that, but my son is. And so are my parents. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's, even if it takes every family sitting down and drilling it into family members or whatever, I would do it for the sake of other people. No, you know like, I mean? like I said, I, I hope to God we don't face another... I uh, know, but I've been honest, I think that's where, exactly where we're headed to, and which is what people don't want. No, well, absolutely. If it keeps going like this, it's certainly going to happen. All right, uh, Rachel, let me go to Brian. You're on 98FM, Brian. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Brian, we're talking about the uh, level three restrictions put in place in Dublin over the weekend, uh, whether or not they are working or are going to work or how, how you're feeling about it. Yeah, well, I tell you, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking about the last lockdown, I was say, as I was saying, it'd be wise. But uh, uh, sorry to cut across you, Brian, I wouldn't describe this as a lockdown by any stretch yeah, well, of the imagination. I know, yeah, I know what you mean, but during the, I know what you're saying, but it's, uh, but during the, the restrictions, who wanted a better word. Yes. But uh, <clears throat> during the last, during the, the lockdown, the, other, the, the earlier lockdown, I was commuting in and out to Dublin. Mm-hmm. I'm a central worker, and uh, only, on only one occasion, I came across a guard checkpoint. In, a, in about 10 weeks. Really? Yeah, well, no, I have to say, I came across loads. Um, maybe it was the time I was travelling or whatever, but I came across an awful lot. Um, I haven't seen any over the weekend, bar that one in the Phoenix Park, which just, still, I still don't understand what they were there for, uh, because within County Dublin. But anyway, yeah. um, you believe that these measures need to be enforced in order yeah. for them to work? Yeah, I think so too. And... Uh, what I was what I was saying to you, you, you was out there. What I was saying was, there was even photos of guards getting onto buses and was out checking to make sure they weren't going. On, they were that the journeys they were going on were essential. You know what I mean? And that was that was another thing as well. So I think it was more enforced more I think the last time than. And when you say enforced, are you talking about like checkpoints on the Nace Road, um, checkpoints for people heading out to Bray, out to Balbriggan, yeah. or out to Drogheda? Well, I, I went, on the occasion when I was coming in, I, I came across a checkpoint near Clonee coming in on the way into, on the way into Dublin. There. When was this? Uh, on during the last during the oh, lockdown. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Point. No, I know. Yeah, no. Like I said, I came across loads as well. But um, I saw just one over this weekend. Uh, do you think that it is being enforced, or do you think it has the potential to work to stop people travelling into Dublin and out of Dublin and try and contain this virus? Yeah, well, I think it was given time, but it only remember it only came in on Friday evening, so yep. you know, and so, so I think it needs to be given time to try and work. You know that kind of way. Like we're only in the early days of it now at this stage. Yep. All right. So, Thanks very much indeed, Brian. Let's just play a few more of your uh, WhatsApp voice notes. This is from PJ. I haven't, but I would. I'd have no problem doing it. You can't keep people locked down into their areas for too long. That's not going to work. Just keep your mask on, keep your distance, and there's nothing else you can do. Uh, Bill is reacting to Suzanne, who's the pub owner, um, earlier on. Here's what he says. Hey, Adrian, how's it going? Uh, Billy over in Clester. I, um, I feel for that lady. I feel for all the publicans and restaurateurs because um, I don't agree with what the government, but, like, just because, I mean, it's a hard time for her, so just more and more rules, Gardy coming to the house, etc. Like, complain about frappuccinos and yummy mummies, whatever you're talking about, but you were there too to witness it, right? So stay home. 
if you, if you have a problem. Yeah, but Bill, um, she did go out and she did leave when she saw the place so uh, packed. Uh, Claire agrees with what Suzanne was saying. Uh, Suzanne, of course, from the Eden House in Rathfarnham. Adrian, I totally agree with that girl. I'm from Farnham and I was in the park in Marley Park because it's close to where I live and there was loads, I'm talking loads of, uh, I don't know, women. I don't know what age they are, but they're all all together in big groups, jogging away, no mass, not a care in the world. And I'm starting to get really pissed off because I'm just walking alone because it, it's the safest thing to do at the moment. OK, Sinead sent me this. That lady, Suzanne, is 100% right. It's not only Oliver Bond. It's everybody that needs to take precautions. Nobody out there is taking precautions. Everywhere is packed and no social distancing. She's right, we were in Marley Park yesterday and we had to leave because it was just unbelievable. All right, and finally, uh, this message from Rob. Adrian, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This government are idiots, absolute idiots. They locked down Dublin, but yeah, open pubs all around the place. What's going to happen? People are going to get in their car and they're going to go for a few points outside of Dublin and they're going to drink drive. And people are going to die from road deaths because and people are going to get killed and injured. Uh, like, they're not thinking outside the box. They're, they're, they're just dopes. They really are idiots we have in this country. They're trying to run. I mean, the people that are out working now again this this week. Like, cop on. Like, just open the pubs. Open who you go and, and learn to live with the virus. Do what we're doing. Social distance. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Like, we're adults. We're not bleeding to children. You know what I mean? I know some people are, are not playing ball, but they, you can't blame them kids for having a party in, in Oliver Bond. They're bored off their head. There's nothing to do. There's nowhere to go. Like, of course it's going to happen. All right, Rob, thanks very much indeed. And uh, just we were running a poll there asking you over this past weekend, did you leave County Dublin? 52% of you said no. 52% of you said no, but 48% of you said yes. <laughs> so... Uh, that's not really working then, is it? 48% of you from uh, that just uh, snapshot poll did leave County Dublin over uh, this past weekend, and that's in only two days. And 52, uh, sorry, 48% of you have already broken the restriction where we're asked not to uh, leave our county. Anyway, we will monitor this over the coming days. This is 98 FM. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. IMRO award winning local current affairs show of the year. And this is Adrian Kennedy with you until uh, midday today. Now, next on the programme, let's talk about something that is not related to the pandemic or COVID 19 or restrictions or level three or anything like that. I have a very simple question for you. The person you're in a relationship with right now, be it your wife, your husband, your fiancé, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever. How and where did you meet them? Well, the reason I'm asking this is statistics out today reveal that after internet dating, okay, so it's obviously the number one way people are meeting at the moment, the most popular way for couples now to meet is by being introduced by a friend. The next most popular way is through work, so I want to find out how you met your uh, other half. Call me right now on 67979981 or you can send me a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. I want to hear from you about how uh, and where you uh, met your other half. Because today... Internet dating is the most uh, popular way for people to uh, meet. So after that, and leaving that aside, how did you meet your other half? Send me a text or WhatsApp or a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 98 98 98. Or better still, call me on 67979981. So if you met online through social media or through Tinder or whatever, that's fine. We don't want to talk to you because that is the number one way in which people uh, meet. But I want to hear from you if you met in some different sort of way. Call us now, 6797-981. The Sound of the City, from Lucan 
to Lusk. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Our telephone number is 67979081. You can text, you can WhatsApp, or you can send a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 98 98 98. I want to find out, um, as we said, internet dating, online dating, uh, is the most popular way for people to meet in 2020 Ireland. Uh, That's Tinder or whatever other apps you might be using. Um, But if you didn't meet online, I want to hear from you, because we know that's the number one way. For example, we were talking about this in the office earlier on. (laughs) Our Katie and her now husband, Alan, lovely couple, a lovely, lovely couple, Katie. Um, well, one of them is. <laughs> Alan, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Anyway, uh, our Katie and her husband, Alan, met. Wait, you hear where they met? <laughs> they were both in detention at school. <laughs> this is a true story. They met at detention in school when they were teenagers. And uh, so they were obviously both misbehaving, uh, that they ended up in detention, but that's where they met, in detention at school. And love's young dream blossomed into a beautiful marriage with a lovely child and one on the way. So, yeah, that's how they met, in detention at school. I want to find out from you, how did you meet? And um, the weirder, the better, to be honest with you. Here's a WhatsApp voice note from uh, Ray. Yeah, I met my girlfriend through a friend of ours. We went out on a double date. We were set up by a friend of mine. And... um, yeah, that's that's how we met, Adrian. And uh, yeah, right, seems to be the way. Other than the internet dating is being hooked up to friends. Nobody really goes and approaches people anymore in bars or pubs. It's all through friends and internet dating now, but it looks of it. All right, Ray, thank you very much indeed. Steph. Hi. Hi, Steph. Good morning. Is it you that sent me in this photograph that I'm looking at? Yeah. So tell me where you met. So I met my fella in a local pub on Halloween night, dressed as a sugar skull with a full face of makeup, contact lenses, uh, spider webs, you name it. Right, now I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this photograph, uh, Steph. <laughs> and I, I have to ask, how in God's name you got talking to him because I'd have been terrified looking at you. I mean, the, <laughs> it, the, 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 the I was actually out in the smoking area on the phone to my sister giving out about something going on in her estate on Halloween and I was actually giving out to her saying why would you be surprised and it turned out he was from there so he approached me because I was giving out about his estate. Ah, I see. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> right. So that's what got the conversation going. Yeah. Um, and, right. Because uh, the, the, the mask and everything else is terrifying looking. Um, it's it's am- all face paint. I've done it all myself. Yeah, no, uh, it's brilliantly done. Um, yeah. And you got talking to him, so did he calm down about you giving out about his estate? Yeah, and we didn't leave each other's side. I blanked all my mates for the night, and we sat out in the smoking area for about four hours. And then I had to go home. He went clubbing with his friends, and the next day he rang me. Ah. And it's six years in October. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Right. So you, yeah. you you certainly didn't meet in a traditional way by any stretch of the no. imagination. I would have thought that was a good old fashioned way, though. It could, well, yeah. Except you were given out about his estate, which is why but he started. He wasn't meant to hear me. He was ear wigging. <laughs> uh, what, what did he say? What, uh, what exactly did he say to you? So you're on the phone to your sister. She's given out about her estate, all that's going and on, Halloween night. And, went, um, and what's so wrong about blah, blah? Yeah. And I just kind of looked and I went, mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got talking. Yeah. Oh, very good. That's a great story. Um, and I assume um, have you, you haven't moved, you haven't got married or anything, have you? No, no, God, no, never. Because that would lo- make a lovely wedding invitation, that photograph. Uh, and I, if I did, i do it on Halloween as well and make but, a compulsory oh, fancy yeah. dress. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a brilliant yeah. idea. <laughs> All right, so, thanks very much indeed. Thank um, you, uh, let me have a listen to this WhatsApp voice note from uh, Shannon. We're asking, where did you meet if it wasn't online dating? Uh, this is Shannon. Good morning, Adrian. Shannon here. Um, I met my partner James in Copan and Rat Mines. He was over on a stag do from England and then he came back two weeks later and then it was like every two weeks we travelled back and forth to see each other for about three years nearly and I made the move then in October to come to England. So yeah, 
Meet in, in Copan and Rat Mines. <laughs> we always go back. And now living in uh, in England. Brilliant. Um, this guy met his partner. Oh yes, love stories begin in this place. Centra. How are you, Adrian? Gav here, fit in the bathroom out in Luke, and I met my missus in 2005. I was an apprentice plumber. She was working in the centre in Swords, and we were smiling at each other for a good week. Then I gave her my number, and we went out for about three months, and then we lost contact for about ten years, and she popped up on uh, Plenty of Fish, and uh, what can I say, the, the years were kind to her. We are supposed to be getting married now this Thursday, but it wasn't meant to be until next year. Yeah. Cheers, Adrian. Thank All you. right, good man. <laughs> the years were kind to her. <laughs> Neve, tell me how you met. Well, my friend set me up on a blind date, and so I got all dressed up. Everything was great. Went to the pub. He didn't show up. Ooh, so uh, not a good start. Great, terrible start. So as you can imagine, my mood was brilliant, and. Um, I knew this, it was a local pub, so I knew the bar staff. So I was having a right rant about all men are this and all men are that. And this guy turned around and he said, oh, we're not all that bad. Now, <laughs> wrong move, the mood I was in. So kind of backward and forwards and got chatting. And that was 13 years and one child ago. So hang on, hang on. So you were on a blind date. Who didn't turn up. Who didn't turn up, Okay. So and then the, bar, the bar staff felt sorry for me and yep. they put a pint in front of me and said, yep. drink that and calm down. <laughs> right, <laughs> okay. My mood was bad. Yeah. And there was this guy watching a match at the bar and he obviously overheard me giving out about his entire gender. Yep. And he said, oh, we're not all that bad. He said, I wouldn't have done something like that. And we got chatting and we kept chatting for 13 years so far. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, so, uh, it's so um, some good came out of the bad of a, a bloke not turning up. Did you even bother to find out what happened to him, why he didn't turn up? No, no, I didn't. I actually, my friend showed me a picture and I got away like <laughs> Oh, really? I traded up. Uh, well, we'll put it this way, had you seen, uh, had you seen the picture beforehand? No. Ah. No, they wouldn't show it to me. Now right, I know so had, had you seen the picture beforehand, would you have gone? You there, Neve? Oh, what's happened to her line? Just disappeared off the face of the earth. Are you there? No. Okay, keep them coming in. Um, 67979081 is our telephone number. You can text, you can WhatsApp, you can send a WhatsApp voice note like this from Michelle to 0877 989898. Hi, Adrian. I met my partner, well, my fiancé now, about 17 years ago in a disco. A disco. It's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. In a disco. Uh, oh, this is very romantic. Or maybe it isn't. From Nikita. Hey, Adrian. Um, I met my now husband at a Celtic match in Glasgow. Um, not very romantic, but there you go. There Take you go. Care. A Celtic match in Glasgow. No, but, well, you see, the one th- if you were at the match and he was at the match, you were uh, presumably... Uh, both Celtic supporters. So you already had something in common, I suppose. Yeah? Maybe? Uh, Laura, good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Laura. Laura, tell me where you first met. I believe this is bizarre. Um, Yeah, it's quite a weird one. Um, It's not a very usual kind of love story. Um, I was with a guy for five years, and we broke up last year. And then shortly after, I realised that his older brother was actually, um, you know, was more the meant to be story. So now we've been together for over a year. So Ooh. kind of kind of unusual, but you know things worked out in the end. Yeah, right. So <laughs> hang on. So you were you were going out with a bloke. Uh, yeah. You split up, and then ended up going out with uh, his brother. With the older brother, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so I think he's probably listening at the minute. So <laughs> I can. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on, hang on. How, how did that go down with the brother that you were going out with? It actually went down pretty well, to be honest. We we broke up on very good terms. It was a mutual thing, and you know I always got along with the older brother, and it just we all had that discussion, and things just worked out pretty well. Because I, I, I'm just looking at the very first message that just came in, and it says, "Oh no, the brother." Because <laughs> yeah. it's one of those unwritten rules, really, isn't it? That you, you, yeah, you it, don't go down that road. A lot of people think that you can't, but a lot, I know a lot of people that it actually has happened with, and so does he. And a lot of people that I talk to about it say the same thing that they know of situations where people have kind of kept it 
in the family essentially and it's worked out so it's just, it's that is that is mad, right? And there's another message. Oh my God, no, no, no! You don't date the brother. <laughs> no, well, it's worked out, and everybody's getting along great. And you know, there's, there's no weirdness about it. Everything's just kind of everybody's settled into the whole situation now, and it's pretty much you know it's accepted. So and here, ha- have a listen to this uh, voice note that's just come in to me. <laughs> ah, sloppy family seconds. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Sloppy family seconds. No, no, that's no. Ah, uh, you can't tell who you love in the end, though. That's the whole thing, Adrian. Oh, that's true. That's true. So you're yeah. with him. You're with him a year later, still. A year later, still going strong. Yep. You're you're raising a conversation that um, that I'm going to have, and that is. Uh, <laughs> Is, is this a no-no? I'd love to find out from other people who may have uh, been in uh, that situation that you end up dating the brother or the sister or whatever. Uh, this yeah. is, uh, I, I'm told this message is a little bit rude. Hang on. Adrian, fair play to her. At least then when she gets drunk, she can say to the brother, hey, you want to have a threesome with your brother? Oh! Have you haven't had sex before. <laughs> She's thinking outside the box. No, 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 no. I'm sure that's not on the radar at all, Laura. <laughs> no, definitely no. not, no. No, the, the reaction I get from most people is that if you're happy, that's all that matters. Matters, so that's, that's a uh, they're they're the ones that are being politically correct. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but some people must have said, "Oh my God, really?" Oh yeah. Oh no, absolutely. There was a lot of you know the that's very controversial. The you know situation that I got from a lot of people. A lot of people said it was a bit you know strange and outside the norm. But you know, I'd love to know. Uh, yeah, I'd love to know if, if any others have been in in that situation where you ended up dating. Uh, the brother of your ex or the sister of your ex. Or the sister, yeah. Or the sister, and, and, and find out how, how that's going for you. Is, yeah. There's no awkward... But you, uh, you said yourself and the first brother split up mutually. It wasn't on bad terms yeah. or whatever. No, not at all. No, we, we broke up. It was, very, um, it was very mutual, and we were both happy to be friends afterwards, and I still kept in touch and stuff like that. Mm. And just, we, me and the older brothers always got along, and then we just kind of went up together. So it was very... Very, you know, organic sort of state. thing. Yeah, the way it happened. Yeah. Yeah, it's everything. <laughs> by, by, by the way, Laura, uh, just to let you know, uh, the lines are absolutely hopping here. Um, <laughs> for people I've like a can of worms now. <laughs> yeah, have uh, literally opened a can of worms. Hi, here, have a li- have a listen to this from La- Laura. No, that is so wrong. If you don't mind me asking, <laughs> did you sleep with both of them? Oh, you want to answer that? Well, it's been a year later, so the you know the, I think that goes without saying. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but not yeah. at the same time, if that's what she means. No, obviously, you know, obviously, no, obviously. No, obviously. Not at all. Um, and here's another message. Which brother was better in bed? Oh, like oh, 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 no, no, Laura, I'm not going to even ask you to answer <laughs> no, that no question. Comments. No comment. Thank no you. comment. No comment. No <laughs> comment. Um, and uh, another one. Imagine being able to say the line. Oh, that's not how your brother used to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm assuming as well, Laura, you've never done. No, not no, no, I've no, never, I've never commented on that. No, no, keep, we keep it nice and diplomatic here in this conversation now. I, I'm going to I have to take a break but uh, Laura you've been great to talk to uh, you really yes. have opened um, a, a, sure conver- a conversation so, um, <laughs> so let's move it on to that and find out whether or not you've ever been in a relationship with uh, the brother or the sister of an ex you've just heard uh, Laura explain how she was going out with a the bloke they split up uh, it was mutual didn't have a falling out and a year later she ended up going out with his brother uh, this is Megan Hi Adrian, I actually have a friend who was dating a guy and then they broke up and ended up dating the brother and they've actually been married for 10 years now, so it works. Okay, is this a big no-no? Is this a just is something you don't do or maybe it's something that you have done? Call me now on 67979981 or is this just an unwritten rule that you don't go out with um, a, a, a mate? Or a family member when you were growing up with somebody else. Call me right now, 67979281. Back in a second. The sound of the city. From Donna Mead to Drimna. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. We were talking about the ways in which people uh, have met and then we got onto a conversation about um, <laughs> is this a big no-no? Laura was on with us uh, a couple of minutes ago. Here's what she said. I was with a guy for five years and we broke up last year. And then shortly after, I realised that his older brother was actually, um, a bit, you know, was more the meant to be story. So now we've been together for over a year. So 
Kind of, kind of unusual, but, you know, things worked out in the end. Oh, well, there you go. That was Laura speaking a couple of minutes ago. She is now going out with the older brother of the guy that she was going out with for five years. Um, Amanda. Hi. Hi, you? Amanda. You say fair play to her. Absolutely. Fair play to her. Yeah. Oh, right. Tell me your story. Okay. Uh, I worked in McDonald's. Oh, God. About... 32 years ago okay. in town and there was this fella I'm not going to name names but he was mad about me for two years that I worked there absolutely crazy about me we lost touch after I, lo- I left McDonald's um, and I was at my local sword uh, pub and he was helping his sister move into a house in swords they were from Glasnevin and it was packed pub was packed mm-hmm. and I was walking through the crowds and he said to me hi he says uh do you remember me? And of course, it dawned on me who he was. And he said, this is my brother, his bigger brother, right? Well, he was absolutely gorgeous. A right. dreamboat. Right. Compared to... <laughs> this fellow was dark and stumpy. The fellow that did like me. Right. The fellow that... <laughs> his older brother was all tall, dark and handsome. Absolutely gorgeous. That was in October. Yeah. We got engaged in November, married in the February. So all in all, in six months, we were married. Um, I was expecting my first child the year after, and I'm still married to now with four children and um, 30 years now. Right. <laughs> come here, do you, do, you still, do you still look at the other brother and go, you're short and stumpy? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, I've, often said to, I've often said to my husband, he's, still, he's no neck, he still has no neck. <laughs> but the difference is you never actually went out with him, did you not? No, 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 right, no, no, oh God, no. Where no, Laura was no. going out with your man for five years, they broke up oh, and then she ended up with the brother. Oh my God. It oh is a bit God. of a, I mean, the amount of people on uh, onto us saying um, it's, it's just a no-no, you just don't do it. Oh, I say go for it. Absolutely, go for it. If it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. But obviously, it did for Laura. I know, but I'm just, I, I'm just imagining like Christmas dinners and stuff like that. The whole family sitting there and <laughs> oh, and brother A thinking, oh yeah, I was with her before you, brother B, okay. and oh. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't down that road. Thank no, at least no, no. you weren't. Yeah, but you could no. have ended up with short, stumpy brother, but oh, you no. ended up with dark, handsome <laughs> yeah. brother. That's it. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> It's all worked out for the best, Adrian. Yeah, okay. Here's, um, <laughs> stay there for a second, Amanda. Here's a WhatsApp voice note that's just come in to me. Uh, yeah, no problem at all. I was just thinking there, what's the word coming to? Uh, that's akin to incest is all I could think. No. no. Absolutely horrible. Uh, it's not incest, for God's sake. Um, we're talking about uh, whether or not dating a brother or a sister of your ex is ever uh, a thing. Um, do, do, do. Let me have a listen to this from JD. Talking about keeping in the family, Jesus, that's bad. That is absolutely bad. And the old saying out there nowadays is, we're in this together, the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose, keep it in the family. Luke uh, sent me this. Tell that girl that's a no-go. Adrian, could you imagine being with a girl and breaking up with her and she with her brother the week later? Lord Jesus. <laughs> Um, Joey, you're on 98 FM. Hi, you, Joey. How are you doing, Adrian? Joey, why why do people see this as a big no no? This is the way I look at it. When, when it came up, I was like, oh, yeah, one girl, two brothers. But then I thought about it. Would all the lads ringing in still feel the same if they were with two sisters? It's, it's, one, thing, well, yeah, okay, it's one thing being with two sisters, it's They're another. going with one and then marrying another. It's yeah. the same thing, just roles reversed. Yeah, but I'm trying to Would find... The lads I'm trying to have find, a problem with it. But is it one of these unwritten rules? Let's let's look at lads, for example, OK? Yeah, it's awkward. It's awkward because she seems okay, to so, so, make it. OK, say a group of lads and yeah. uh, they all hang around together and whatever and um, Johnny is going out with this girl. They split yeah. up and then uh, Tommy starts going out with her. That's a no-no, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's a no-no. It what is. What happened? It does happen. Oh, no, I but, know it happens, like, but um, it is it is a no-no, isn't it? It's just I'm, a non- I'd be more uncomfortable with a girl being with two brothers than I would a man being with two sisters. Oh, how that sexist wrong? of you. Uh, yeah, I know. That's why I'm ringing and I'm saying it. Yeah. It's wrong that I think like that, but I don't see a problem the other way around. But you with, would and, see you it know. if it was one of your mates. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But, uh, like, forgive me for it, but 
it doesn't affect me as much saying, oh, that fella went out with that sister and now he's married to that sister. Where it would bother me if it was my friend saying she was with him and now she's with him. I see that uncomfortable. It's the wrong way to, to see it. Okay, that's it, it, the way I see it. I assume in your life you have an ex-girlfriend um, somewhere along the line. Um, yeah. Would you have minded... Have you a brother? I do, five brothers. Okay, so she's, she's got her choice there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Would it have ever bothered you if that ex-girlfriend ended up going out with one of your brothers? Um. Yeah. Yeah. And who are you more annoyed about, her or your brother? Probably my brother. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, probably it, my brother. It, it's, like, like, you know, that's why I said, man, don't go there. It's going to make things awkward. Like you said, family family gatherings, christenings, communions, confirmations, weddings. They're going to be there. You're looking, you're saying, oh, I was a whole before you. Yeah. And you know when two brothers fall out and there's a few drinks involved and it starts a row at, at a house party or something and the first thing the brothers going to come around and say is, I banged your missus. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know, I know. I'm just thinking about <laughs> and it. that will happen 100%. Because that's the first thing. Laura says know. in her situation that uh, it's all good. Um, everyone's happy as Larry. Uh, but, yeah. But if something happens, which it can possibly happen tomorrow, yeah. arguments still happen in families. And the first thing that's going to be thrown across the table is, I was with your missus. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. And I'm then done. that's just going to end it. And then it's going to all hell's going to break loose. That will always be there. It will never, ever, ever, ever be taken away. That is always there. That little bit of ammunition will always be there. So, no, I don't... No, but, no, no. No, no, no. no. okay. <laughs> Here, let's, uh, let's listen to uh, this from Tara. Now, if Laura goes on to have kids with her fella now, like, in a few years' time, the kids will be sitting at the dinner table going, me ma was with me uncle. Ah, uh, stop, no. mad. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's awful. Uh, Jamie sent me this. Would you trust your wife? With your brother, years later, alone. Oh, I never thought of that. But they, no, they split up. They split up. They, you know, it wasn't working. So why would you possibly go down that road again? You, you, you probably wouldn't, would you? <laughs> oh, Laura, what have you, uh, what have you started here? The, the majority of you, I have to say, uh, and Laura, I'm, I'm delighted it's all gone uh, well. Um, the majority of you are saying absolutely not. This is not. This is not Laura. What have you started here? Oh, Jeremy, I'm just hiding on the big desk. Jeremy, on. I don't think I get that much uh, adverse reaction to him. Well, uh, uh, like, uh, and have no problem with it. But I, I was saying to you that um, in your world, in your life, with your family and friends, nobody has really batted an eyelid, have they? No, not at all. Because they see how much we love each other, and mm. they see that you know everything's happy as Larry and. He's okay with it, and he has a new girlfriend for the last year as well. And you know, we're all very happy in the house. So there's been no controversy with it. No animosity. Or, I mean, people are saying, what if they had an argument someday? One would throw it at the other, or whatever. That's no. It's 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 all down to the people involved, and everybody's you know happy, Larry, with it, and there's been no problem. Now, what so. do you make? What do you make of some of the comments that have come in? I love the guy with the incest. Yeah, well, like seriously, I, I no. I think so. that chap needs uh, to read you, about what that actually entails. <laughs> yeah, I think that was. Uh, I think there was a tad over the top. Now, a to be tad honest, tad over the top there. Um, yeah. Here, I've, I've just want to play this from uh, from Cora. Stay there for a second, Laura. Adrian, I'd love to know what um, his parents think. Like, does she actually come into the house now? But like, as as you said, like for dinners and stuff. But just as. You know the 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 other brothers, Mrs. It's just so weird. Five years is a long time with a family. Like that, they just accept us. Like there's so many questions to this that need answers. Okay, what about the family? <laughs> what about the parents? The parents, it, it was a bit awkward at the beginning, but after time, they they kind of came to realise that it was a real thing and that it was serious. Because um, obviously, you'd been going with brother A for yeah. five years or whatever around to the house and whatever, and now you're going to the house with brother B. Yeah, no, because we all got along so well and the parents just kind of adjusted to it over time and they realised that we did love each other and that it was a real thing and that, you know, they accepted it without 
failed. They they had no problem whatsoever, and because he was so okay with it as well, everything just kind of worked That's out. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Maybe it wouldn't have worked out as well if he wasn't okay with it, because you've heard other guys saying, "Oh, jeez, I wouldn't I wouldn't have any yeah, of that." But some guys would be very, you know, heard about it. But no, he yeah, but at least he's well. okay with it. All right, very he's good. Totally well, okay anyway, you, you you stirred it up there, Laura. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> good luck. Bye. Nice chatting to you. Um, and let's just, uh, Bob, you don't see a problem with this either. Hey, well, look, a test for it, you know, and you know what you have any harms, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, listen, listen, um, you were saying about friends and uh, the same thing. Like, yeah. Look, look at Melinda May with her husband. She's split up from him, and she's actually living with a member of the band now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and they all get unhappy as I ready, know, you know, yeah, so? but it is, un- it is unusual, you have to oh, admit. Oh, it is unusual, but look, so it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, done, you know what I mean? It's not that unusual. I mean, there's two, for instance, that we're talking about, Melinda yeah, May and the right. girls on the radio. Yeah, all right. Uh, let's have this. Let's just go back to where we started this conversation because there's a load of you bothered to send in a WhatsApp voice note. We were talking about where you first met. This is from Dawn. I actually met my partner in the gym that I worked in, but I couldn't speak to him for months. Um, I couldn't even string two words together. And only when he actually added me on social media um, was I actually able to start talking to him when he came in. So... Okay, uh, Stephen's relationship started in a very strange way. My partner now, um, uh, her friend got sick all over me uh, at a concert in Dublin one time and uh, she felt very sorry for me that her friend got sick all over me and we got talking and it was a very weird um, way of meeting but uh, we are now married now four years and very happy together. It's a very strange way of meeting, but it's kind of funny as well. All right. Uh, Catherine sent me this. Hi, Adrian. I met my husband in a shop. I went in to get um, a 7-Up and I came home then and a friend of mine introduced me on a dating site and he was on that and he clicked into me and asked me out. So I went out with him and five or six months later we got married and now our anniversary was the fourth of this month and we're six years married thank you thanks very much um this is from claire hi adrian um i met my husband now we're 20 years together now we're only four years married i met him and he worked in a unit across from where i worked with my brother and I had slipped my hand and there was nobody around so I knew that his dad and my brother were friends and I went over and he looked at the cut and he ended up passing out. So it was me having to look after him and 20 years later we're still together <laughs> and I still have to look after him. All right, thanks. Great story, Bye-bye. Claire. Thanks very much indeed and thank you all of you. Uh, that conversation kind of got um, sidetracked but that's the live radio for you. Thank you for listening today. We're back again tomorrow morning at 10am. If you have something you want to bring up on the show send me an email to Dublin Talks at 98fm.com. Barry Dunn is back today and he's got some great music in the next hour like these. FM.